everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, there's a motorcycle gonna go by and completely ruin my intro, but uh, <laughs> in today's video, I wanna talk about my future plans for the orchard, for the gardens. Um, really gonna break it all down and tell you guys why I'm doing it, what I'm excited about, because there's a lot to be excited about, man. Oh, man, um, I'm really, ex and every year it gets more and more exciting, more and more things are happening back here. Uh, the fertility goes up every year. Things get a little older every year. I mean, it's just, it's a joy, you know? And this whole thing has just been so rewarding. And if I can inspire any of you guys to do one thing, I think I've succeeded. So in the bed that I'm sitting in right now, which if you look to my right, you can see it's kind of outlined here by this red brick. This is gonna be a bed of just fig trees that we're gonna be planting in the ground. Same thing with to my left. You can see there's one right there that we planted. This is a pretty good example of how we're planting them is that we're building them up in mounds. Each tree will have their own mound. We've mounded up the soil pretty high here and inevitably the mound will be about a foot high. We're not adding any mulch, but what we will add is rocks and I'm gonna add in some brick. You can see this brick down here, this red stuff that I hate, it's ugly. We're gonna be using this brick and adding this on top of these mounds to really help warm up the soil. I took some soil temperature readings the other day. I couldn't believe the difference between something that had some rocks on it or some bricks on it compared to just bare soil and even compared to soil that is really well mulched. Even this garden bed is pretty low in temperature compared to this garden bed so that's what we're doing is we're planting in this whole raised bed here not, I mean, not even a raised bed i'm sorry just this whole bed uh we're gonna put about 22 i think fig trees in here so this is going to be really fig central for me we're still going to use this little railing here this little wall this is going to have the pomegranates the potted pomegranates on it and then on the patio again is going to be all the fig trees in the pots we went to pretty great lengths i think to plant a lot of flowering plants here and the whole goal was to bring in some early pollinators bring in just just pollinators in general to this side of the yard we have all the garden beds here so that's kind of important um also i wanted to make this portion of the yard beautiful if you remember this is where we overwintered all of our potted trees. We let them sit out here. We straw them heavily. You can see on the other side of the wall, here are the jujubes that we overwintered. And now we've actually had them with no straw covering the pots outside since about early March. And what that's doing is that we're letting the pots get hit with the sunlight to help warm these pots up, warm the soil up because my jujubes are literally like the last thing to wake up in my yard. So I can definitely afford to do this. I would definitely not do this with something like an apricot, which is probably the first thing to wake up in the yard. So you wanna keep things cool with the mulch or take the mulch off to keep things a bit warmer. But this whole bed, we have all these weird flowering plants that are gonna be coming up. Hopefully that uh, lavender plant comes up. We had divided some lavender in the fall and hopefully this thing made it through. I have a really hard time with lavender and rosemary just surviving here, it's very strange. But um, this whole area is gonna be really beautiful to kind of disguise this ugliness, but I think it's actually not as ugly nowadays because we're gonna have all these figs in here. We planted lots of garlic, guys. I mean, garlic is everywhere, shallots are everywhere. Onions are now gonna be everywhere. We have leeks that overwintered. We have got every type of allium you can think of, Egyptian walking onions. I'm obsessed with alliums and cooking with them is really, really important. Um, you can see the figs down here. Most of them have pretty much died back to the base or to some older wood. And uh, it's a bit disappointing, but these trees are only a year in the ground now. So I can't really expect anything what I am blown away by is this pomegranate. And this is the Salavatsky pomegranate. We did a whole video just on that. There's absolutely no damage on this tree. Even on this really thin growth up here, it's no damage. I can't believe it. This has got to be the hardiest pomegranate 
in existence. I know it survives in 6B and it's survived here at two degrees Fahrenheit with no damage. Um, in this bed here, we've actually planted out some snap peas, sugar snap peas. We direct seeded some of them in here. Um, I really love sugar snap peas. We've talked a lot about those. We've also direct seeded a lot of different cool oven crops because today's only April 7th. So we can really afford to do this. We've also added in some nice little fertility organic fertilizer that we picked up actually in the fall when things really start to go dormant a lot of these home depots and lows they will put a lot of their fertilizers on clearance i picked up a ton of organic fertilizer we've already you know fertilized these beds i still need to add in some micronutrients i'm going to add in some you know some lime probably some gypsum we're going to add in also diatomaceous earth for sure because these rice holes actually do a similar thing where they give some nice silica to the soil i think that's extremely important also we're going to be adding in some uh, mycorrhizae we're going to be really inoculating this whole thing with mycorrhizae and uh yeah this whole bed here is covered with the cool cool loving crops carrots beets all that stuff that hopefully is going to fruit and ripen in time or be ready to be picked in time before we put our heat loving crops in here, which I don't think is really gonna happen. So what we're gonna do is probably come in here because we're gonna be planting corn in here. We're gonna be planting um, really a whole bunch of different types of corn. We're gonna be putting in here melons, I believe. We're gonna be putting in some um, uh, peppers as well that we've overwintered. We dug up the peppers, brought them inside for the winter time. And all this is going to be eventually heat loving crops, but I can always wait a bit longer to plant that stuff um, when the soil really warms up. But for now, I want to enjoy this crop and I want to keep it here as long as possible. And if it's in the, you know, understory, no big deal, right? Eventually the heat loving crops are going to take over and this stuff will be finished at some point. I think it's a really good way of doing it. You don't want to be doing things like broccoli and cabbages and rapini, right? Because that stuff's eventually going to um, way surpass your heat loving crops and your heat loving crops are not going to really get the growth you want. Um, but this whole bed, we're really taking it seriously with tomatoes. We're doing a number of varieties of heirloom tomatoes and here all vertically, by the way, same thing with melons. We're doing about 16 varieties of melons this year heirlooms that are musk melons there's a difference between a musk melon a cantaloupe and there's no such thing as honeydew even though we get them at the store <laughs> um, honeydew doesn't exist well it kind of does but it's not really its own species right the the main forms of melons are either cantaloupes which have a kind of like a pumpkin exterior where they uh, can have like ridges in them and they're smooth whereas a musk melon actually has that webbing on the exterior that we normally see at the, at the grocery store here in the United States. So I'm going to be taking melons super seriously because they are an incredible fruit. Um, we're also going to be growing um, watermelons, but a little backstory, went to Japan, tried an incredible tasting melon because they care about their melons there. They care about their fruit quality there. And um, I was blown away. So we're going to be doing a whole crap load of melons. All this stuff's vertically as single stem plants. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I suggest you go back to other videos and look that up. Look up the tomatoes and see how I'm growing the tomatoes. It's a superior way of doing it. I'm telling you, you get a lot more food in a smaller space. This bed here that we just looked at, this is only a 10 foot long bed. 10 foot by three foot. This is three foot by about 15 or 16 foot. And I'm gonna be growing so much food in this little location that you're gonna be blown away. We've also got like alliums, by the way, underneath every single tree I've got. Look at that, look at these, these garlics right next to a fig tree. And the fig trees are three feet away. We have a pomegranate in the corner. We've got these giant standard sized peaches, which are now flowering beautiful espalier trees and underneath is everything you could imagine shallots leeks we have sugar snap peas down in here it doesn't matter we have egyptian walking onions we've got this guy here which i totally forget what this thing's called but we've got also chives in there 
Um, the honeyberries are flowering. I'm really excited for that. But we're kind of getting a little bit of, an, of a, too much of a tour style here, I think. This little bed here is going to be for the potatoes. And we're doing, um, it's like a, you know, probably, I think there's about two pounds of potatoes that I'm growing this year that we've had, uh, we started, by the way. We had two pounds of potatoes to start. Maybe it's 10 pounds. I think it's 10 pounds of potatoes. But essentially, it's a lot of potatoes that we've we've started here in this bed. We've got some yacone that I ended up getting from a friend. That's going to grow in this little area here. And then this here is a new garden bed that we created. Real simple. We just added in some, uh, like we did over here, we added in cardboard. We put the mulch down. All that stuff broke down. Killed a lot of that grass underneath. And now we added lots of soil we fertilized this yesterday as well and if i take the uh, cover off of here you can see that a lot of this stuff's coming up now and it's coming up way better than it is in any other bed because this bed doesn't have mulch on it the mulch is not cooling cooling down the soil here also uh this bed is just getting hit with a lot of sunlight because of the way that the sun is orientated and there's absolutely no leaves on these shade trees yet. So this bed's getting a really nice head start. We've already planted a lot of the apple trees out. We've created two different rows. If I bring you guys over here, you got a row of them here. Isn't that a gorgeous sight? And another row of them here. We had to stake up one or two of these guys, straighten them out a little bit, but they're all gonna grow in their own direction, right? These are gonna grow out this way. These are gonna grow out this way. Um, we've talked about in the past prior years that what we're going to do with this little location is along the fence we're going to espalier some plums just like we've had espalier the peaches. Those are already in, in like form. They're already coming into their own. Um, this guy back in here I can actually if I wanted tie down the first arm of this plum all the way down to this wire. And uh, we'll do that, but I think I'm going to wait a whole year before I do any tying down whatsoever. So this one will be a nice little two-wire system. we got to come in here and, you know, really straighten up these wires, fix the T-posts. Uh, the pawpaws, believe it or not, I think this is finally going to be their year. And this whole area just is not very fertile, but we've added in so much material here so much organic fertilizer that these guys should be going nuts i would expect this year so we'll see i don't know they're not really in the sunniest location but it is what it is but that's kind of it for this little area we have the the nice kiwi vine that's already reached the wire and is going to be trained along this wire and that's going to then come out sort of like this a nice little shape like that a nice little umbrella shape and then behind it is going to be the espied peaches it's going to look real beautiful i have to say uh, let me take you guys over to the other side of the yard we had like done a nice little garden plan video we drew it out talked about where what's going to go where it's finally almost done you know everything's already kind of in its spot you can see over here, this is like the nice little planting of plums and apricots. This truly, though, is not the greatest spot for them. You can see they're already in full bloom, a lot of this stuff. And it's just too much sunlight hitting the soil at this time of the year. And that is really warming up the soil, waking up these apricots, waking up these plums and putting them in full bloom. We're still about three weeks away from our last frost. so. Um, you know crossing my fingers, but you never know what's gonna happen. We've got strawberries down in here and these are my um, June bears. We dug up a lot of these moved them to other parts of the yard. I want to continue heavy strawberry production, especially from the June bears. I think they're better than ever bears or day neutrals just in the fact that they put out a lot of fruit and it's a lot to keep up with at that time of the year, but there's not much else going on, right? They fruit super early. This is an early glow variety here is what it's called. We'll let this one really propagate itself all over this bed. Here we're going to have raspberries, and these are going to be the coolest thing, I think, of the backyard in this section. Just in the simple fact that we've got 
We're gonna have a yellow raspberry here. That one's a pink raspberry. These are the reds. And then back in here, which we haven't planted yet, are the purple raspberries. So we'll have six plants. I get about a pint of raspberries per plant, which is insane. And I can't really keep up with it, so I don't know how, if I'm really gonna keep all these raspberries here. But for now, at least for the next two years, I probably will keep them here um, and taste all the different flavors because they all taste actually quite different depending on the color. Um, my pears, by the way, are going nuts. You can see they're really flowering. I'm in shock by how many flowers this is. But that's really cool to see. Maybe it's a bit too soon. Again, we could get hit with that early frost. Now, what I've got at the end of this bed is actually blackberries. We've got the uh, Primark Freedom. But I think what I'm gonna do is actually get rid of the Primark Freedoms. And here's why. Because on this side of the bed, we're gonna be planting four fig trees. And then also on this side of the bed is gonna be, excuse me guys, four fig trees, three feet apart, two rows of them. And then in between, I was thinking blackberries, but the triple crowns or any, any blackberry really, that's semi-erect or erect, thornless, not thornless, uh, you know, the Primark Freedoms, Primark 45, they just get huge. They're massive plants. They're not like the raspberries, which you could really kind of contain them. But even so, you know, the raspberries you could put like two feet apart, whereas the blackberries, you know, three feet minimum, they reach about nine feet. I've had some that are like 12 feet tall in a single season. So that's gonna kind of create an issue for the figs that are gonna be along here. But I like blackberries. Um, so what I'm thinking is getting myself a trailing blackberry, um, getting myself a Marion berry. And the Marion berry is the most complex of all the blackberries and all the blackberry hybrids. It is the best one. And for flavor, that's what I'm all about. I really like Primark Freedom. It's just that I don't know if I can get the compactness that I'm looking for and also the amount of fruit that I'm looking for off of the Primacane crop here in my location. I would say in this location and most of you guys in the Northeast, even most of you guys in the Mid-Atlantic, you're probably going to want that early crop, that Floricane crop, which fruits on last year's canes but we every year chop them back because they're such crazy vigorous plants that i chop them back to the base and then we tip them kind of like we do the figs we we take off the tips uh, and then they fruit but i haven't really dialed that whole process in i haven't really got the technique down so i don't know exactly if i can really control these things and if I can get a really decent fruit uh, crop of fruit off of them, the uh, the primacanes late in the season, it just seems like they're a bit too late. By the time they come in, it's already almost dormancy, and um, you know, it's not really ideal. So, what we'll do is we'll get the uh, the Marion berries and they'll trail along here. And what we'll do is we're gonna build or buy actually a nice little fence kind of uh, one of them wired fences where you can stick the fence um, kind of in the ground on here and create a nice little arch and stick the other side in here and it, you know the fence because it has wires in it it's kind of like uh, it's easy to trellis to right it's got all these little squares in it I don't know exactly how to describe it it's not exactly chicken wire it's more of like a heavy-duty fence you can pick up and then on that little arch will be the canes keeping them off the ground and then what we can do is every year because the marion berry you have to protect we'll put the canes back down on the ground cover them with mulch and um, they'll survive the winter time they're a little a little um less hardy than i would like so if you're thinking about doing this in zone seven that's kind of the thing you got to do uh, you know, maybe if it was over five degrees Fahrenheit every winter or maybe even eight degrees Fahrenheit, you probably wouldn't have to do what I just said, but it is what it is. In the greenhouse, man, now there is kind of what we're doing right now is a bit of a tour style, right? I'm showing you guys what's going on in here, but believe it or not, I am having, I do have plans for the greenhouse this year. We're going to take all this stuff out of here. Obviously, it's gonna go on the patio. I'm really just 
enthrall this year at the growth. What all this stuff looks like at this point, I could pinch a lot of this. A lot of it has already put out Braba. There's so much Braba in here, I can't even believe it. There's something I did last year that really encouraged the Braba because we pruned these hard. Every tree in here got pruned hard. Something I did, I think it's the overwintering main crop is really what this is. Maybe this, one of these two is a Braba as an example. But essentially we're taking all this out of here and we're gonna plant a fig tree in the greenhouse. And this is a really cool part. We're gonna put a fig tree in there and we're gonna graft a number of capper figs to that fig in the greenhouse. And that thing is gonna grow in the greenhouse. It's gonna be a bit difficult, I'm not gonna lie, because this thing doesn't get a whole lot of rain and it's super warm. If it's a, if it's 90 degrees out, this thing's like 130. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, if that fig is really even gonna survive, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna plant one in here, we're gonna graft onto it, multiple varieties of capper figs all in an effort to potentially be able to colonize the wasp here because the wasp, believe it or not, can survive about eight degrees Fahrenheit. It'll get wiped out almost completely. At 10 degrees Fahrenheit, it gets a bit better and then 12 degrees Fahrenheit gets even better. So if you can have a climate or you have a climate where your fig tree and your capper figs are being kept above about 12 degrees Fahrenheit, you're almost guaranteed to have a really nice crop of wasps, blastophaga, that will pollinate all your figs, which is really cool. The greenhouse certainly stays above 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So all I have to do is get the capper figs growing and then get myself some blastophaga, get myself some profici from a friend in California. Should be no problem at all. I get the stuff, the, the, uh, the wasps come out of the profici, and then I've got myself a colonization of these wasps. So really, really cool. And actually a lot easier than people think, I think. I mean, it's not going to be super easy, right? But if you guys live in an area where it's at least 12 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit at the low every winter time, you could do it. You just gotta plant a lot of these, a lot of these capper figs all over your property even within like a mile radius, you know, go out and gorilla plant some capper figs. And if they colonize there, they'll eventually find their way to your lo your location. Because let's say your location gets a bit colder than maybe something that's a half a mile away. They'll eventually just travel and find where to, whatever it is you're looking for. Over time, you can make more and more of these capper figs and actually colonize it. So. I'm really interested in that whole process, but I'm not certainly one that is um, saying it's it's easily done just yet, right? We have to prove it first, but the whole idea is certainly there. Um, in this bed here, what we're going to do is we're actually planting out another row of figs. This is already a currently existing row of figs. We have to fill in some gaps, but this was a raised bed. We took off the sides move the soil around and it's just going to be two rows of figs all the way down here we're also putting a row in here with the rocks and you can see the rocks we've talked about that in the beginning of the video really is super warm the soil in this location along the house is super warm you can see the sultane here has already started growing because of this warm soil um, so i'm really excited and we're going to do the same thing as put down some nice brick, put down some rocks, really cover these mounds that we've created. See how high these mounds are? Eventually making them about a foot high. What we're doing in this raised bed is we just got a, a, a strawberry. This one was bred by Cornell. It's the Purple Wonder Strawberry. It's a purple strawberry. I'm sure because it's purple, it has a different flavor. And I'm interested to taste it. Obviously, I don't know if it's going to be here long term. But we're always trying new different types of strawberries. One strawberry that I really love is the Alpines. We're propagating that one like crazy in the house right now. We've started them from seed. Somehow they've been kept alive. <laughs> They're very difficult to propagate. And eventually this entire bed is going to be filled with Alpine strawberries. Maybe this section here will be left for the regular types, the purple wonder there. 
But other than that, we've got onions planted in here, which are really, really cool to see this year that I've been able to do that. And then this section of the yard, this is the Illinois Everbearing. We've talked about this at great length. We've chopped this thing way back because it just grows too quickly. Um, so what I'm going to do is graft onto here. We're going to do a couple bark grafts around each of these different rings here. And then we're going to graft a variety called Girardi. And Girardi is a dwarf mulberry because it actually fruits so heavily that it doesn't grow very much. And this tree will inevitably be about six feet by six feet. And because it's on this huge rootstock, I mean, this thing is super vigorous. I'm a bit worried because uh, it's certainly going to send out a lot of shoots from the base, from a, a lower point. We're going to have to come in here and maintain that almost every year. And what I would think at some point is that if I, when I move away out of this property, is that this tree probably should be dealt with in some way, some fashion, because it just could get too out of control with how close we have it to the house. Um, this persimmon, I'm really excited to try this guy, get more fruit off of it, have a huge crop of uh, fruit this year. Other than that, the garden plans and the plans for all this is not really too dramatic. We just planted these peaches here. These are actually dwarf and you can tell by the size, but we're planting them deeper. We scratched the bark, exposed that cambium, exposed the hardwood too, all in an effort to get them to root out and eventually turn into standard peaches. So that's the goal with that. I don't think it's going to be that difficult for that to happen, but it will take probably about a full year and it really uh, will take about two years for them to inevitably catch up. We've also got some fig trees that we're planting here in the front of the yard and you can tell, look at all this garlic we've planted. We've got all kinds of flower bulbs that are now really disappointingly dying out. These are crocuses, I believe. They looked gorgeous for about a day. <laughs> I am really disappointed, but uh, you can see all these garlics here that look beautiful. This is music. And then we've got new varieties of figs in here, all in an effort. I mean, there's going to be about 50 fig trees I'm going to have in the ground when it's all said and done. So that is essentially the tour here, guys. Uh, I wish I could show you more. But that's really all the plans for the upcoming season. We have about two new, three new garden beds. We've limited one, so our vegetable production should be pretty high this year. And uh, yeah, there's gonna be a lot to show you guys. So thanks everybody for following me along on this little tour, this little thing here. It hopefully got you guys excited, inspired. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Ross Ratty. Also check out the new website. If you guys made it this far, think about um, supporting me on Patreon because um, you guys are really the people that are the diehard supporters of my channel, really enjoy the content that I'm offering. So you may just want to think about it, no pressure. But anyway guys, I'm gonna get back to work out here, enjoy this beautiful day, and uh, catch y'all soon, all right? Take care everybody.